<laughs> Inner Sanctum Mysteries, brought to you by Bromore Seltzer and starring Ben Hex. <laughs> Friends of the Inner Sanctum, this is your host inviting you in through the squeaking door. Come in, come in, won't you? We're having a gala fair tonight, a grand premiere at the downtown mausoleum. And anybody who is anybody will be there. Yes, it's formal, of course, but you don't have to wear evening clothes. You can come in morning. But do come early. We're having a few people in to die for us, and you mustn't miss the opening kickoff. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, The Spectre of the Rose, is an adaptation of Ben Hecht's newest motion picture, which will have its Broadway premiere on August 31st. It was adapted by Robert Sloan and is presented by the Emerson Drug Company of Baltimore, Maryland, whose registered pharmacists compound that speedy, refreshing headache help in the familiar blue bottle, Bromo Seltzer. <laughs> this is your host, ready with tonight's story. It's all about a ballet dancer who made a woman's heart pirouette and kept a detective on his toes. Our guest tonight is only a student of the ballet, but at telling stories, he has no master. So here is the Spectre of the Rose, and its author, Ben Hecht. People like Andrew Fanning were born with one foot in heaven. The grace, the charm, the effortless majesty of his movements were learned, perhaps, but never really studied. To him, the ballet was like food or sleep, a normal function of the body, an inseparable part of the soul. And when Andre danced in the theater, ushers watched, stage hands stood by on the wings and stared. Even the manager of the company applauded as the last act cut and fell. Bravo, Andre. Bravo, you from the music. Don't be an old ghost, Polycarp. Very nice to thank you. Oh, but tonight it was even more the same. Already they're calling you Lashinsky. That's Madame Lassil. He's right, Andre. We've been standing the mic. You see that hand they're giving you? It's for you, madame. You're an inspector of the road. Oh. I'm just a puppet who brings your dancers to life. Ah, oh, you're a fool. Go out there, take another call. No, no. No more calls without Nina. My wife is entitled to some of this story. She's dancing hard out tonight. Mm-hmm. Find her. Go before the curtain. Nina? Nina, where are you? We're going to take a call together. Where is she left you in her dressing room? No, she hasn't come off the stage. Maybe one of the girls knows where she is. Good heavens. What's wrong? No, who cares? One of the girls saw mouse. Don't be a poor polycarp. It's that little one, Heidi. Something must have happened. Make Andre. Come. Mr. Sunny. Mr. Sunny. Here, here. What's the matter? Your wife, Mr. Sunny. Look. She's so still. Mm. I tried to wake her up, but... Nina, my darling. Speak to me. It's no use, Andre. Don't touch her. She said... No. No, I can't believe it. She died right here on the stage, Andre. On the stage. In the costume of a rose. Nothing like it had ever happened before. A ballerina dies in costume at the end of a performance, and her husband's grief closes the show. But men like Polikoff, men who are full of ego and insolvency, never let a good show stay closed. It took a month to find a new backer for another ballet starring Andrew Sanin. But as soon as he found one, he went to La Silk with his plan. His bigger and better plan. It's a gold mine, darling, a gold mine. Monica, why do you come to me with your gold mine? I'm getting my girl the lessons. Andre Sanin is sick. No, sick. I don't believe in that sickness. No, that's Please, please. Listen. All right, children. All right. Just a moment, we'll start again. Oh, I can't forget Andre. He's mental. But how long can a man suffer over a dead wife? A week, two weeks, but then months, that's ridiculous. 
Turn the music, please, Hilda. I told you. He doesn't dance. He lies in a bed, staring. He hasn't moved for months. He doesn't even know if it's day or night. That's not fair, madame. He's moody, but he's as charming as ever. This poor child here brings him soup. Like Little Red Riding Hood. He never even looks at her. You're oh, sweet of you, Heidi. As long as one woman still adores a man, he isn't sick. He isn't mad. Yes? Uh, what is it? Excuse me. Are you Madame LaSalle? That's right. My name is McFarlane. I'm from the Homicide Bureau. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? What about? About a dancer you know called Andre Sanin. You know where I can find him? Well, I imagine you can find him right where he's been for the last seven months at home when he's flat. Where is that? Why do you want to see him? Oh, just a report I'm investigating. You know how the police are. We never really close our books on a case. What books? What are you talking about? Well, to be perfectly frank, mister, Sanin seems to have been making some peculiar statements about his wife. And I'm not altogether sure they aren't true. What did he say? That his wife was murdered. Murdered? Yeah. That's why I'd like to talk to him. Get some of these statements firsthand. This is foolish, officer. He's sick. It's his sickness makes him say things like Just that. Just the same, I want to talk to him. But you can't. Not while he's in this condition. I wouldn't think of letting you speak to him now. I'm afraid you'll have to, young lady. Why? Who did he say murdered his wife? That's just it. He said he did it himself. <laughs> Let's get one thing straight, Miss Carlin. I didn't kill her. And if I told somebody I did, it's only because I'm sure than a bed bug. So help me. It was stuck in my mind. What was stuck, Mr. Sunning? The idea that I'd killed her that night on the stage. It's, it's sort of a dream. Andre. It's all right, Heidi. I can talk about it. Go ahead, Mr. Sunning. Talk. Well, it's like I was telling you before. I I get these dreams. Daydreams, you might call them. Oh, they're real to me. I, first, I hear the violins and hearts. Way up high. That's the sight. Then I see myself coming in in a jacket of roses with a knife in my head. You know? Uh, no, I don't. Is this one of the characters that you play on the stage? That's it. It's a dance called The Spectre of the Rose. Only you don't really carry a knife. It's, it's only in the dream. You see what I mean? The, the dreams are all, all mixed up. Well, you're a little mixed up too, aren't you? No. No. No, not anymore. Now, it's only in the dream that I, I killed her. But I haven't had that dream or I've heard those gray violins for some time. No kidding. In other words, you're normal now. Sure. Like a rock. Even the music doesn't bother me anymore. Wait, I- I'll show you. Play it for me, Heidi. Andre, no, not the sector of the road. Play it, I said. All right, Andre. You see, I've graduated. It's nothing but a walk to me now. I take it back about being free, Miss Farley. Do you mind? I... I've been working in this room with that turn chasing me up and down the walls. It's just a walk to me now. Just a walk. Ladies, gentlemen, this is an historic moment. We're witnessing the comeback of a genius. It is a comeback for me, Polycarp. I'll dance again. Of course you'll dance. We'll build the entire ballet season around your scenery by conducting a full orchestra. You can do your own choreography like you always wanted. Bravo. Bravo, come on. Andre, be careful. Oh, Angel. Little angel that heaven has sent to nurse me back to health. I'm well again. And you have made me so. But, 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 you're beautiful, darling. And I want you to dance with me. Don't you understand? You shall be my ballerina. Andre? Do you mean that, Andre, you want me to be your ballerina? Of course, my darling. Together we shall dance the spectre of the rope. In two weeks, Andre Sanin was ready to start rehearsal. In another two, the specter of the rose had already begun to take shape with Heidi in the ballerina role. Then, one night before the opening performance, Madame Lassilk took Heidi aside after rehearsal and told her something she never expected to hear. You must leave the show, Heidi. You cannot play this role. Why? What's the matter? I've done your terrible wrong letting it go this far. But there's still time if you do as I say. You must not see Andre anymore, my child. He mustn't see you. What are you saying? Listen to me, Hush. Go away from him. Run away. Tonight, tomorrow. But don't come back here anymore. For heaven's sake, cry. Why should I leave Andre? I adore you. I know you do, my darling. But he's begun to adore you. Then why don't you want... Heidi, please, listen. There's something more important in your life than love. But he worships me. 
Don't you understand? We were made for each other. Andre wasn't made for anybody. He's a madman. Well, don't think that. Andre killed Nina. And he'll kill you if I let him. No, he didn't kill Nina. You said so yourself. I lied to everyone, including the police. I guess he's been around here a dozen times. He smells the thing that happened. He smells the truth. What is the truth? Andre is a killer. No. No, I'm not going to listen to you. You will listen. You caught Nina viciously in the dressing room a half hour before she died in the face. She had a knife in his hand, and she was cutting him off with a chair when I came in. He died from a heart attack. He died from the blows he gave. I gave her life for one last performance. But he killed her just as if he'd stabbed her with that knife. Don't you let him me, I have to tell you to hide it. His head is hurting him again. And that's the way it started with Nina. He has the same look in his eyes. That's why I want you to go away. No, I won't go away. I can't. I can't. Because we were married this afternoon. No, no, Andre, please put me down. Oh, but I insist, darling. Man, I should write the case right across the table. <laughs> Even a wolf one like this. <laughs> <laughs> there, now I can let you down. Oh, you're so sweet, my dear. Sweetness is infectious, Angel. I'll catch it all from you. I want to take it. What's the matter? The music. I don't do anything. You, you can let it go away. Hold me. Hold me tight. Tight, Angel. I love you, Andre. I'll always be with you whenever you need me. I need your sweetness so much. No? Forever. I'll never harm you, Heidi. Believe me. I'll never hurt you. No matter what happens. I don't talk, thank you, darling. It's frightening. Don't be frightened. I just want you to know that. Again? Yes. I'm sorry, sweetheart. The music. It sounds like devil's screeching. Oh, please, what can I do? Nothing. That music is for me. Please let him dance. Oh, I'm The phantom. The man with the knife, can't you see him? Oh. He's coming. Closer. Closer. Hurry. Like a spectre of a rose. Here he comes, Johnny. Look out for the knife. Oh, Johnny. Andre. Oh, no. Andre. Oh, oh, my darling. <laughs> Love me. Love me. Do you know that the experts in radio have a way of telling how many people listen to a program? When they figure this out, the program gets what's called a rating. If last week's audience is any indication, many millions are listening tonight to Inner Sanctum. Yes, Inner Sanctum is a top rating show. And among those millions of people, it's a sure bet that some of them are going to have a headache tomorrow or Wednesday or the next day. And when that happens, many of them have a product on hand that gets a top rating for headache health. It comes in a blue bottle. It fights headaches three ways. Yes, it's Bromo Seltzer, the headache help that millions know because of the fast relief it brings. Fast relief not only from a headache itself, but also from a stomach upset and jittery nerves that may go along with a headache. And Bromo Seltzer also rates high, Mr. Wee, because it's such a pleasant way of combating a headache. Why, Bromo Seltzer is so nice and refreshing, there's nothing I'd rather take for a headache. That's what modern folks everywhere say. So remember, friends, Bromo Seltzer is at your druggist, fountain, and counter. And next time you have a headache, get fast relief from that headache grief. Take refreshing... <laughs> well, now that you've had a chance to catch your breath, let's give this ballet dancer another whirl. Hmm? And find out what makes him tick. Eh? No, 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 no. Not Andre. The other one, the gay blade that dances up and down the walls with a knife. He's the one I like. Only it's a pity he never uses a fork. But then what can you expect of a specter? 
that he's an artist, and uh, artists who paint with a sword have a nasty habit of drawing blood. <laughs> well, let's get on with the story. Here's Mr. Hex to continue. The mind of a ballet dancer is hard enough to fathom even under normal conditions. Fed on symbolic thoughts and childlike enthusiasm, its simplicity is deceiving. Like a fine watch or an expensive radio, the delicately adjusted mechanism that gives it balance can become distorted. One crossed wire, one loose connection, and instead of hearing a beautiful symphony, out comes static. That's why Detective McFarlane was on hand at the theater the night the Spectre of the Rose was scheduled to open. Now, don't get excited, Lutzel. I'm not here to arrest anybody. I just got a hunch that something might happen. What? Don't you know? That guy went crazy last time he danced. Loonies like him have a way of repeating themselves. Will you kindly not add to our burdens? I've explained about Nina's death a thousand times. Mm -hmm. That's the trouble. A normal death needs only one explanation. But a thousand aren't enough when it's a case of murder. Don't! Don't, please! Stop your fighting up there! Don't give me that, Lassell. That scream wasn't upstairs. It was right down here in Andre Sunning's room. Open up! Open the door! Open up, Ralph! Put you there! Andre! Heidi, what's wrong in there? Huh? What? Who's making all the noise? Never mind about that. What's going on here? Oh, uh, nothing. I... I've been asleep. Somebody screamed in here. Where is she? Who? What are you talking about? Your wife. Where is she? She's, uh, she's lying down, resting. We always rest before performance. You wanted to see me, officer? Uh, oh. Yeah. I thought, uh, something might have happened. I heard a scream here. And... No. No, nothing's happened. My husband and I were quarreling. I screamed. I couldn't help it. Oh, please leave us alone. They're not so fast. They look a little pale to me. Are you all right? Of course I am. Wouldn't I tell you if I would? I don't know. Well, listen, will you? I know this isn't very pretty, but everything is all right. After the show, you can hit me on the head if you want to, but right now, you've got to leave us alone. We're dancing tonight. He's right, Miss Fowler. Leave him alone. Okay. I won't bother you anymore, Sonny. I'll be standing right outside the door. Fair enough. <laughs> Darling. What did I do to you, darling? No, 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 no. I struck you, didn't I, Angel? I struck you with my face. Please, Andre. He struck you. Him, that whirling devil. I thought I was watching him, but it was me. I'm the one who... No, darling, no, I love you, Andre. Did you hear me? I love you, Andre. I'm no good, Heidi. Just a lot of muscles that can dance. The rest of me is rubbish, broken glass. And no, no, don't, don't oh, talk now, please. Don't even think. How can I not think after what I've done? Heidi. Your shoulder. It's bleeding. No, don't look, Andre. It's only a scratch. It's not. It's deep. It's a cut. I can fix it. I did that to deny. I cut you with the knife. No, there wasn't a knife. Don't lie to me, Heidi. There was. I tried to kill you. It was an accident. I fell against the glass. Can't you see the edge of it? It's sharp. And I thought... I'm sorry. I tried to hide it from you in my rope. The knife. The knife. I held it in my hand. It wasn't you. Take it, Heidi. Take it and plunge it into my heart with love. No, no, never. Angel, you must kill me before I kill you. All right, All right, darling. All right, darling. Tonight you must dance. They were like music that night, not like people. Like music floating to the air like resonant notes echoing down a corridor. When the curtain fell, the ovation was tremendous. Heidi and Fanny were an overnight sensation. And the Spectre of the Rose was only the first of their triumph. For weeks, they played the capacity houses. And then one night, just before curtain time, it happened. They're not here yet, Lassie. They're not here yet. What? Heidi and Fanny, they're not in the theater. No. What time is it? Eight twenty-five. Five minutes before curtain time. They're not here yet. How can they do this? Oh, please, please. Have they called up or anything? Nothing. Nothing. They haven't called the phone in their apartment. Doesn't answer. Henry's been calling them for twenty minutes. Where is Henry? Uh, here, ma'am. What can I do? Bring him again? No, 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 Henry. Go over there right away. Something must have happened. You'd better tell the audience, fellow. Cause they're not coming. How do you know? They're not coming. I tell you. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to call the police. <laughs> I'm going to open the door. Never mind the knocking, Lestelle. I got a key from the super. 
Nobody's home. McSar and Henry would have called us if they were here. Just the same we're going inside. They certainly made a mess of this place before they left. How do you know they left? I don't know. I'm almost afraid to look. What's that? Wait. There's somebody on the floor. It's Henry. Henry, what happened? Uh, yeah. Yeah, God. Where? I don't know. He took him away. Where did they go? What happened to you? He, he hit me with that chair. He's like a wild man. What did you say to him? Nothing. I I just wanted to get his guy. Never from. mind about that. Where did they go? I told you, I don't know. She was afraid the doctor would come and take him away. That's why they left. She didn't want any doctor seeing him. That foolish little child. You must find her, McFarland, before it's too late. I'll find her if this guy will get any sort of a lead. But all I know is what I told you. She said she was going to hide Andre from everybody till he got well again. Was he bad? Yes, ma'am. He, he was talking about violins and harps way up high. The way they begin in the specter of the world. Andre was bad. For three days and three nights in the stuffy hotel room where Heidi had hidden him, he tossed and turned over in his bed like a man with tropical fever. And all the while, the demon sang in his head. On the first night, Heidi went out with some food. When she came back, Andre was very still on the bed. Oh, Heidi. Oh, I... I was hoping you'd be asleep. I... Mm, that is so. He, he dances all the time now. I, in my mind, I can't stop him. Don't sleep, Andre. Mm. 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 I brought you some rolls mm. and milk. I'm not hungry. Oh, you must be hungry, oh. darling. You haven't eaten for three days. You, you were gone just now. Where did you get the milk? Why, why didn't you stay? Are you here alone? I'm not alone. He's here. He's always here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much better this afternoon. I thought you were well again. Yeah, yeah. I... Please. Oh, there's still time. Darling, if you could only sleep. If I could only get you some pills, but they won't give them to me without a doctor's prescription. Yeah. They'll call the doctor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I wouldn't call yeah. anybody. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. I'll make you so well again. Yeah. The way I did before? No, you, you mustn't take your eyes off me. I won't, mm-hmm. Andre. Oh, you have to see. Don't be afraid. I can stay awake. I did it for three nights. I can do it for more. I hate you, Heidi. Andre. I'm a dancer, not a crazy man lying on the bed. I'm a dancer. I dance, I dance. <laughs> Andre, I haven't the strength to make you laugh. I really want to laugh. <laughs> The music is in my ears. Oh, darling, go. I can't hold you anymore. Look at him. Look at him. There's no one here. Please, I tell you, he hasn't me around. Please, put that new pot of gold. It's no use. I can't stop him. He climbs the wall. Just to the air. I always smile. Because he wants to see my face. You hear, Heidi? He wants to change places with me. Heidi. Oh, no. No, I'm not asleep. I just couldn't be there. Mm. I've got mm. to lie down. No, no. No. No, please, I'm tired. Mm. I can't do the work anymore. Mm. I've got to sleep. I sleep. Yes, me. Yeah. Sleep. Sleep, my dear. Mm. And I... I will dance for you. Oh, darling. I warned you to stay away, Nina. Oh, Nina. Come in. We're changing places. No. Where are you? I can't see you. Look. I'm here. I'm you, Andre. Here. Take up the knife and dance. You must dance, Andre. Yes. Yes. The picture of the road. For you, Nina. For you, Nina. The dance where you die. While the rose spins around with the knife. 
My kill meaner. <laughs> I come to the stage. I leave. I turn. I spin. A pirouette. A pirouette. A pirouette. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Oh, my darling. My poor darling. Well, this is your old choreographer. And let that be a lesson to all you whirling dervishes. If you must commit a murder, don't wind up like a top. No, only in this case our hero wound up at the bottom. Well, as I always say, a rolling stone gathers no mausoleum. <laughs> oh, a word of advice, friend, from a man who made quite a mark for himself, cutting throat. Murder, he says, is a messy business, but business always comes before pleasure. <laughs>